Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Patient First Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Brian Laskin, and today we have an exciting, hot topic in the world of technology. And you probably know, just by me saying a hot topic in the world of technology, what I'm talking about. Of course, of course, of course, right now, it is chat GPT. It's all the rage. If you've tried it, maybe you haven't tried it, I would recommend you try it. But really, what does chat GPT mean for dentistry, healthcare, for us as dental providers, as patients? How does this type of technology affect our lives? Well, ChatGPT is what's called a generative AI technology. General a generative AI is capable of generating new content. In, in ChatGPT's uh, instance, it's, it's text that's not specifically programmed into the system. And it can be a wide range of different AI models and techniques that use machine learning, deep learning, recurrent neural, neural, neural networks, excuse me. But what this really means is that it comes up with content on its own based on a massive database. So in ChatGPT, example of ChatGPT, it scours the internet looking for things that have been written. And then when you ask it to write something for you, it leverages that. Now it's also been, there's been some controversy about how some of this has been rolled out, that it, that it was generated by some people and you know, in countries that were, and so there's some some sort of ethical questions about how some of these technologies have been, been rolled out, which are important, but fall out of the scope of our podcast here today. What we're talking about is, should you leverage? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages of generative artificial intelligence and how it can change your life for the better and maybe some problems that can happen up? So, there are some potential downsides with generative AI that really get, have been glossed over, in my opinion, in the overall media. So we don't know, well, generative AI is all based on large databases of knowledge of some type or another. And because of the way that these, these uh, models work, we don't really know where this data, these databases are coming from or in, in, in many cases. And what we do know is that every database has biases into it. And we don't know how these biases with how the, the information affects the algorithm because the algorithm is constantly learning, constantly changing. And a big problem that has happened is in law enforcement, which has used AI, generative AI for a long time, that has been shown that the same racial biases that people have is expressed in the algorithms itself. That's a big problem, not just for, for this one instance, but if you think about it, the, these, these generative AI systems are not any better than the databases, the data sets that they're creating these algorithms out of. So what that means in the case of law enforcement is that humans' biases get incorporated into the AI decisions, which is obviously, obviously hugely problematic. How does that affect the world of dentistry, right? You're thinking, hmm, well, what's the number one, a when you think of AI in dentistry, what do you think of? Probably reading radiographs. Well, I've had, I know a lot, of, there's great people, these are great companies that are doing great things, and I think these AI radiographs, uh, radiographic readers and, and are, are, are hugely valuable tools. However, however, almost all of them, at least to my knowledge, exclusively use generative AI type artificial intelligence algorithms, meaning that they use machine learning or deep learning to and large databases of knowledge uh, with people verifying them to come up with their algorithms. And in my opinion, this can be problematic. Why? Because I can teach anybody to read a radiograph, right? So can you, if you're if you're in the dental profession. So, but when I ask the artificial intelligence companies, why are you using machine learning or generative AI to come up with your, your algorithms? They say, well, because x-rays are read differently in Tokyo or Oklahoma City or Minneapolis. So dentists say, see things differently uh, geographically. And to me, that's a problem that we should be solving, not incorporating into our data sets. I personally don't think that this is a negative expression on the companies and how they express. I think these are fantastic tools that you should use, but 
there's a potential downside. Any dentist, the dentist biases towards reading radiographs can be incorporated into these algorithms, right? So that is a massive downside to generative AI tools like GPT that get incorporated into dentistry. So what's the fix? It's knowing what the database of knowledge is and verifying that they're, you know, looking for the biases and, and really cleaning the database, which is difficult because these are re really large databases that, that need to be put into the generative AI models. Uh, but knowing that you have unbiased, clear information that, that is being leveraged to create these tools. That's the primary downside. The secondary downside that I think of is of course, the big fear of the world turning into the world of the Terminator where Sky Knight takes over and these artificial intelligence tools, <laughs> we just are slaves to them. So there's that downside. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I don't think that that's a huge risk, but, you know, it's one of those things with probability is low. But uh, these are very, very powerful tools. And if you've watched the news, that's uh, most people focus on that being the potential downside. The more actionable downside that I think we should all be aware of and, and asking the questions about is the biases in the databases that go into creating these generative AI tools in the first place. And there's a, there's a lot being used in dentistry. And so uh, hopefully this will, will help you. The upsides, the opportunities, however, are massive. Today, you know, if you want to have a second set of digital eyes looking at your radiographs, you know, that's, that's where it's being used mostly today. Also looking for things like diagnose caries that you have in treatment plans. So there's opportunities to help patients get the care they need and, and treatment plan those periodontal disease. Uh, it's, it's being used a lot for large groups to do quality control, quality assurance to make sure that the crowns that we do have nice tight fitting margins. That's all great stuff. Um, very soon there's gonna be used, it's already being used in writing your chart notes. So there's a massive amount of waste and time and energy getting put into chart notes and that will be almost completely relieved. I think to a large degree, leveraging these tools. Uh, if you want to write a letter to a patient saying, uh, you know, happy birthday and thanks for moving to the area or whatever you want to say, chat GPT -T can do that for you today very easily. Uh, there's great tools for creating images. So if you want to create an image about Show me an image of a happy person coming out of dental practice and getting an ice cream cone because you give people ice cream cones at your dental practice. Well, they, they, they'll get an image that'll be made up that you can, you know, if you don't like it, you can make another one very easily. So images, letters, text, this is, these are all tools that are available today. And I would recommend you try them out because they are very powerful and they can save you a lot of time, energy and money and maybe, Maybe you have somebody at the, in the business team that needs to do some email communications, but they're not the best at writing those emails, like giving them a tool like ChatGPT to, to, to write those emails and, and then they edit, can edit them beforehand, might be a very good thing to do. You know, give, saying, write me a letter to a, to a dental vendor uh, that's very, very nice and says that we, you know, we need another 30 days to pay our bill on time or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. That you don't have to, if somebody takes 10 minutes to write that email, it'll probably take 10 seconds with ChatGPT. So what's coming? What's the future opportunity? Well, here at Tooth Apps, we do people's websites and we're incorporating these tools into being able to auto build your website for you and automatically update it. So those images, that text together, it can build your website for you, right? For $0, $0.0, right? So, I mean, how great is that? Uh, treatment planning, you can look through your, your patient notes and actually create options for treatment. Today, uh, the AI companies are showing you things that are missing, but tomorrow we'll be able to say, oh, this patient would be better off having a root canal than an implant or things like that, right? Those tools don't exist today, but they will very soon. Financial arrangements, we can take together data sets from that we know about the patient, where they live maybe, uh, you know, some scary details that, that are available online, meaning that there's a lot of personal data outside the dental practice that we can pull in that, that's free and easy to get to, and then auto-create financial arrangements, right? So this is not, I believe, a tool like uh, 
uh, some of the other technologies that come out and are hot for a minute and then go away. I believe these tools are here to stay. They're very powerful if you try them out, and I would definitely recommend you try them out. But this is not something I would say to gloss over. I would say, um, you know, some technologies like crypto or, you know, kind of come and go and they kind of stick around a little bit. But I, I think I think AI is a tool that is here to stay. So try it out. Let me know what you think. Like and comment. I'd love to hear what you think about these AI tools in the comments below. And of course, I'm going to be happy to see you here right here again next week on the Patient First Podcast.